Welcome to my how-to series for Google Sheets. One of the most useful spreadsheets I've made is an automatic calendar that updates on its own. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how to build it from scratch. This calendar updates based on the month you choose from a drop-down and the year you enter. I'll also show you how to make the days outside the selected month appear lighter using conditional formatting. Come along with me as I walk you through each step to create your own dynamic calendar in Google Sheets. Start by heading to drive.google.com. In the top left corner, click on New. Then, select Google Sheets. When I first get started with a new spreadsheet, I like to rename it to make sure that I can identify it later in my Google Drive. To prepare the spreadsheet for a calendar, we will need to resize a few columns. Select column A and while holding down the control key select column C, then E, G, I, A, K, M, and finally O. While still holding down the control key, right-click on any column letter. Click on Resize Select Columns and Resize to 21. Now while holding down control, select every other column starting from B followed by D, then F, H, J, L, and M. While not letting go of the control key, right-click on any column, select Resize, and change the size to 160. Let's remove the grid line so that we get a cleared area to work with. Select View from the menu at the top, then select Show, Grid Lines. Let's start outlining the calendar by creating a header for the month and year. Select B2, and while holding down the Shift key, select O3. Click on the Paint Bucket Filler tool and select a color. Select cells F2 to H3 and click the Merge button to combine them. Then, right-click on the merged cells and choose Drop Down. In the menu that appears on the right, Enter all the months of the year as options. Once you are done, click on Advanced Options, and under Display Style, select Arrow. Then click Done. Now select a month to test your drop-down menu. Increase the size to 20, make the text bold, and center it in both directions. Now, we need to create a cell for the year. Select cell I2 to cell J3, and merge the cells. Enter the year, then increase the size of the text to 20, make it bold and center it in both directions. We're going to enter the days of the week from Monday to Sunday in row 4. But before typing anything, start by merging cells B4 and C4. After that, type Monday in the merged cell. Press Enter. Select the cell, then click and drag the small circle in the bottom right corner of the cell to 04. This will automatically fill in the rest of the days. While the selection is still active, use the Fill tool to add a background color. Then, center the text and make it bold. Next, click on the border tool, change the border color to white, and select the second option for line thickness. Finally, click on the inside borders option to apply the style. To create the calendar grid, we will start by selecting cells B5 to C11. Next, click on the border tool and select a color. Click on the outer border tool. Click and drag the dot at the bottom right of the selection all the way to 011. 
Then, click and drag the dot at the bottom of 011 all the way down to 046. Now, select B2 to 046. Select the border tool. Choose a darker color and the thickest border then click on the outer border. Now that we've finished setting up the layout of our calendar, it's time to move on to the next step, adding the days of the month. We're going to use a simple formula that will automatically update the days based on the month and year you choose. This will save you time and make your calendar reusable every month without needing to adjust the dates manually. Before we get started with the formula, use the color fill tool to choose a background color for the background. This formula calculates the first Monday that appears in the same week as the first day of the selected month. It starts by using the date function with the year from cell I2 and the month from cell F2. The match function converts the month name into a number, so January becomes 1, February becomes 2, and so on. That gives us the first day of the month. Then, the weekday function checks what day of the week that date falls on, using Monday as the starting point. By subtracting the weekday number and adding 1, the formula adjusts the date backward to the Monday of that week, even if it falls in the previous month. This allows your calendar to always begin on a Monday, keeping everything aligned properly. We need to change the date format so that it only shows the day. To do this, click on the 123 button in the toolbar. Then, select Custom Date and Time. In the bar at the top, delete any existing entries. After that, open the drop down menu and choose Day as the format. Center and bold the number. For the next day, enter the equal sign, then click on cell C5 and write plus 1. Center, bold and add background color. For the rest of the days of the week, simply copy the second day from cell E5 and paste it across the row to fill in the rest of the week. Paste it again into cell C12 to copy the formatting. Then, delete the formula that was pasted and type in equals 05 plus 1. This will continue the date sequence starting from the value in cell 05. Copy cell C12 and paste it down the rest of column C where you want the days to appear. Finally, copy cell E5 and paste it into all the other cells where you want the day of the week to appear. This will ensure the day formatting is consistent throughout your calendar. Before moving on to the next step, let's test our calendar to make sure all the days are updating correctly. This way, we can catch any issues early and ensure everything works smoothly. It's a good idea to fade the days that don't belong to the current month to make your calendar easier to read. To do this, we'll use conditional formatting. Select all the days in the first week, row 5. In the menu at the top, choose Format, then Conditional Formatting. In the menu at the right, select Custom Formula Is. Enter the following formula. Then, go to the Color Fill tool, select the same color as the one in your day cells. Go back to the Fill tool and click on Custom. Here, you can slide to select a lighter color. Finally, change the text color to a light gray. Click Done. Go to the bottom of the calendar. 
select all of the days in the two last rows. Go to Format and select Conditional Formatting. Select Custom Formula Is and enter the following formula. Select the same color as before for the background and text. Now that the calendar is finished, it's time to test it to make sure everything is working as expected. We also want to check that the layout looks good when printed, so it's ready to use both digitally and on paper. To make sure that it is optimized for printing, go to File, then Print. In the Print menu, under Scale, I find that using Fit to Width gives the best result on paper. We can see that our calendar is not perfect for this setup. Let's go back to the calendar and change the larger column's widths to 165 instead of 160. Use Ctrl P to go back to the print menu. And that's it. Our calendar is complete, it's perfect for printing, and it's ready to use. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe for more tips, and check out the playlist or my shop for more tools and templates. Thanks for watching, and happy planning!